Our next guest is a man who is very important to the student athletes on the Notre Dame campus because he is in charge of many areas that directly impact the student athlete experience. In his role as Senior Associate Athletics Director, Mike Harity oversees the Rosenthal Leadership Academy, career development, community service, athletic training, nutrition, strength and conditioning, and the newly created Sports Science Initiative. Mike earned an undergraduate degree in journalism and a master's in education from the University of Kansas. He used his journalism skills to interview 13 coaches who own 100 combined championships, along with many of their former team members, and turn those efforts into a book in 2012 called Coaching Wisdom. I expect we will hear a lot about achieving excellence in this segment with Mike. Mike, welcome. We're trying something a little different for the first time. I thought it was inappropriate to have the guy who's in charge of delivering services to our students and not have both our student co-hosts uh, participate in this segment. So uh, a little bigger group around the table, but thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me in. I didn't make the cut last year to make the Joe Schmidt show, so yeah. I'm really happy to I'm be on the Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. You are. And, I, and Rachel, I just saw you the other day playing kickball, and uh, you're you're decent. You're decent. Uh, it's my but second. But it's fun to see you it's there. It's my second. That's yeah. sport. Yeah. <laughs> What's your first? Um, <laughs> tennis. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Mike, as the as the introduction suggested, uh, your span is is very broad here. Um, that we've taken everything that sort of touches the student athlete directly and asked you to to provide leadership for it. Let's start with the the the, the sort of the services that go to the the life side of the student athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, the the preparing them for for all they face here and all they'll face after they leave. And and so let's let's talk about building leadership, a key component of what we do here in Notre sure. Dame athletics and what role you play. Well, I'm sitting next to, to two uh, Rosenthal Leadership Academy graduates, and uh, you know it's just been a it, it's been a fun journey. I, I think to as you said before, the the greatest delta between a, a, a team's performance one year and the next year. Yes, there's lots of factors. Um, the key factor we believe is, is student athlete leadership, and if we're not giving them an opportunity to grow in that way, then we're not doing our job. So we've really created an environment where leaders from all different teams can can sit across from each other in a very provide a framework for the conversation, but also allow you all room to to learn what's effective you as a team captain leading football and maybe your position group and broader with defense, and then of course the whole team and how does that apply possibly to to softball? One of the coolest things we've seen is. It's the build of the, the the building of self awareness, understanding who you are, what your natural strengths are, what your natural inclinations are, but then also under connecting to that that greater clarity of purpose. What's the common purpose of the team, and and the head coach plays a, a big role in that, and we incorporate him or her into this this environment, in this process. But but ultimately, as a team captain, you have to turn to somebody and maybe say something to hold them accountable that that might be a little bit uncomfortable. And and how do you do that? Um, well, it helps, we believe, if you have that, 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 that connection at the heart level. And, and I think our best teams, uh, we had Kaylee Olmstead, a team captain on women's soccer, and uh, they've made an incredible run. And if you were to ask me, or Teresa Romanola, the head coach, what's the key, is, is I'd say one word, love. They love each other. And I think with that love and the connection at the heart level, they, they have no problem turning to the next person and say, we, I know that you're capable of more. Please bring more. I know that that's what we need from you. And know that it's coming from a good place. So. There's retreats, there's there's individual workshops on on nights, and we've we've uh, tailored delivery every different every year, taking the student athlete feedback and further sharpening that approach to make sure that's absolutely meeting the needs of each individual student athlete across all of our teams, from first year student athletes all the way to you know to fifth year, and um, we can always get better when you're talking about human development in all these areas, but uh, we're, we're proud of the progress we've made, and, and we've made a lot of it because of asking our student athletes and saying, what what particularly did you benefit from, and then how can we grow as a program? Well, and you built this from the ground yep. up, right? We, yes. we built our own program, which was part of the challenge we threw at you, but of course, you had a, you had, you had a lot of help in it from the more talented Harity. I did. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Jack Swarbrick hires my wife, um, <laughs> <laughs> who's a uh, licensed, uh, she's a counseling and sports psychologist, has worked with numerous pro and, and collegiate uh, uh, athletes throughout the past 12 years. And yes, the more talented Harity, and she allows me to come in the room and say some things every once in a while, and mostly on, I'm setting up the food and the drinks. <laughs> Just a second pair of hands, That's really. right. That's right. That's what I am. Yep. Before I turn it over to these guys for their questions, uh, since we got into family, let's let's cover the rest of it. You, you've, got, you've got two other very impressive yeah. members of oh, your family. Thank you, uh, Jack. And um, Grace is six, uh, Grace Estelle Harity, and... Um, 
she's sick. She actually, when she when we first moved here, our first offsite retreat for Rosenthal Leadership Academy, we didn't we didn't know anybody, so we didn't have a babysitter. So she came and participated. Uh, probably helped me set some things up in the corner while Megan actually did the work. But um, and then Evelyn Lake Harity, who's three um, years old, and and her middle name is actually after a, a, a Notre Dame alum who was my best man at my wedding, Lake Dawson. He was a wide receiver on our football team, graduated in '94, and and played, and now is an executive in the NFL. So. Um, and then Megan, you know, she she uh, she makes Team Harity go. So thanks for asking about. What him. were the Halloween costumes? You know what? Uh, for the second straight year, Evelyn was Olaf. But last year, Olaf from Frozen. It's a classic. Frozen fans. It's honestly it's a classic. classic. It's a go-to. Yeah. Can't right? go wrong. Last year, about 5:15, we're getting ready to leave the door at 5:20. She gets scared and just throws it off and refuses to be Olaf. So we got her in the Olaf this year. <laughs> and Grace was a rather spectacular butterfly. Um, I have an aversion to two things: clowns and glitter. <laughs> and and she wanted to be a clown and but but she did want glitter on her face for the butterfly so no clowns the glitter was present i put it on and and, and i dealt with my my issues around that. Yes. So were you freaking out when the clown frenzy was going on? I'd rather here? not talk about it because okay. a lot of people thought it was a joke. But I, talking about if you Mary's. all if you all saw <laughs> like one walk in that door right now, you would see a different side of me. <laughs> like I would explode with rage and aggression. Yes, I do not aggression like clowns. Aggression or just. No, Come no, I, I would take it on. Fight or oh. flight, I'm going to fight. But, <laughs> but, yeah, but the, the, the clown wouldn't remember me. But, but uh, it's a scary deal. Yeah, well, you know, I was here early, and I remember, uh, you know, my first, you know, times with you was my first semester here. We had some time with everybody else that came in early. And, yeah. You know, I've continued to stay in touch with you mm -hmm. throughout the years, and I'm just wondering how many athletes do you really get to touch on, you know, a yearly basis? Yeah monthly basis because there's so many different activities that you can stay involved in but not all the athletes here get to touch and get to be a part of every activity yep. so how many people and how many of our athletes do you really get to you know interact with you know as as uh as you heard in the the introduction i got a lot of things that this guy once uh expects out of me yeah. so but i've Question. become um you know I, I really appreciate that question i've been reflecting a lot on it uh, in the past two months as as uh the role has grown I'm better when I'm intentional about setting up um, and, and going to meet student athletes because the, the value I get from that, and it's, it's wide open conversations like, hey, how are things going? And you never know where that question is going to go. And mm -hmm. if you've built the, the trusting relationship, they're going to be open. And, and ultimately, you know, this, today's a really good day to reflect on this this week, actually. Um, a young woman's dream is to work at, is to intern at Under Armour. And through the help of, 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 of Jack and colleagues, uh, um, and she's earned it. She's going to have to apply for it and all that. But just being able to connect her with a dream and, and, you know, the promise we make in the recruiting process is to to maximize the growth intellectually, athletically, and personally. But how do you do that? You do that in personal ways. Yes, yeah. there's programs, and we make those touches at retreats and all of that. But there's not a greater joy for me than spending time one-on-one -on -one or in a small group. And I remember that meeting because yeah, it was yeah. all the January enrollees. Exactly. And we, all sat we did there a couple and, different exercises, yeah. and I remember it too. Do I think you? about oh, it often. Good. So yeah. We so did the board breaking. Yep. And all that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so it, it, it's that's very important because because we have to stay in tune and listen to what's important to you and what your dreams are because only then can we understand it and then connect you with them. Yeah. I was just making sure you didn't get too big time on us that you no, forget us. No. Just pretend <laughs> pretend to say hi to us. You're taking care of all the big. Time I do have stuff to here. ask Jack. Have you paid the light bill? Why is it so dim in here? Like why <laughs> is it? We're, 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 you know we we work hard to get the right lighting for. Yeah. Me. yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Got Need it. To make him look pretty. Yeah. Yes. I know we're in a camera. budget. You see all the spotlights are over here. You should, That's right. You should have seen the makeup we put on earlier. Yeah, everybody yes. else moves around. I stay right here. I don't have a good side, so uh, okay. I, 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 I got to stay focused here. So yeah. with all the um, different avenues you kind of work with, with athletes mm -hmm. that, like you said, Jack kind of throws at you, what has been your favorite? Is it working with community service? Is it the leadership roles with Rosenthal? Mm -hmm. Um career services you know what I, I i don't really think about it in that way it's the ones because in any of those you can build a um a relationship and really get to know somebody and when you really get to know them you understand what their fears are what their dreams are what their aspirations are and ultimately that's what we're here to do is to help help you propel you toward that and and one of the joys of the this role and why i was attracted to the university of notre dame if anybody wants to hear my interview story with this guy i'd, I'd be happy to share i'd it. love um, to hear it but uh and i'll come back to that but is uh, it attracts people like you who want to embrace the opportunity and challenge that this place provides. And, um, but to do that alone with all the time constraints, the time demands, the physical demands on your, and, and the academic rigor, like, you know, there is no, um, the, 
you, you all are balancing a lot and are asked to thrive in a lot of different areas, and we believe in providing, and University of Notre Dame as a whole believes in providing an infrastructure to support you. So any, the, the answer is, that, and those touches and those interactions can happen at anything. It could be at a community service event where you turn to somebody and say, you know what, why did you come today? Like, you've done such a great job with these kids. Like, tell me about that. And then you never know what you might uncover, and then you learn something about them. And then, you know, through those personal relationships, we can ultimately help them maximize their potential. And that's the, that's the fun challenge of the role, because there's 740, and there's 26 teams. And, and, and every year, who you are is a, when I met you, your January, your freshman is a different person than it is here today. Much but smaller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what is the what is the uh, interview? I don't know story? if this guy remembers it. So I come here. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a proud graduate of the University of Kansas. I'm a state school kid. I'm coming to the University of Notre Dame, a school I never could have gotten into academically. I did okay, but not not at your level. Not at your level. I don't know what the admission standards were when you got in, but but uh, <laughs> fill out the application. It was a long time ago. <laughs> come on in, <laughs> Yeah. Right. Standards have changed a bit. We were, you know, I I I'd seen interviews with with Jack and clearly his business savvy his strategic vision I had done all my research and knew what he was about and where he was aiming to take Notre Dame athletics and but about um, we had 45 minutes on the on the itinerary on the schedule and about I'd say about eight minutes in the internal dialogue started to where I'm talking a lot probably like I am tonight and I'm excited and I, I want this job I'm so prepared and I'm looking at him and we're sitting on that little couch in his office and and he literally is just listening and looking at me and the, the my voice to myself my voice in my head said this dude will let you talk for 45 minutes and not say a word so you need to shut it down and just listen to what he has to say <laughs> <laughs> so I did I, I brought it down and then yeah. and then he went but where, where we connected and probably you know minute nine was his true passion for helping student athletes achieve their aspirations and he believes this is a place that you can do that in all facets and it was his belief that inspired me to say I, I know what the place stands for now I know what my boss would stand for who's ultimately leading this enterprise and and and, and I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to get that call and um, maybe like you all when you got the offer like I, I cried and uh, with joy and I said I'm going like I didn't even I, I don't I, I didn't even like counter offer or anything I was just like yep like when can I start you know, I didn't even talk to my wife yep I was in I was in I'd walk here for this job um, well, because uh, you did such a good job of the stuff we hired you to do, we've uh, expanded that role to include our sports science and, mm -hmm. and, and, and all that entails. We had a great visit with Duncan French. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think it was about a 20-minute segment. Yeah. We could have gone on for an hour. Yeah. Um, tell us about, in, 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 in a world where you could do a thousand different things and mm -hmm. fall under that umbrella, how do you decide where to focus, what to do? We hired Duncan French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, really, I, I think you've had Paul Wentz on as well, Vice President right. of Athlete Performance with Under Armour. And between the three of us, alongside you and, and all of our practitioners, as, as you all know, we have a dedicated staff of athletic trainers, nutritionists, strength and conditioning coaches who um, are, are, are trying to solve this this puzzle of, of, well, you, you switched positions since you've been here, you've gained some weight, like, okay, so how do we understand you better, both of you, when you come in, every athlete who comes in from not only the mental makeup, but, but uh, the physical movement. So when you come in, you, you didn't get here accidentally, uh, uh, your, the coaches recruited you, and, and because you've shown a prowess at, at a level that, that can thrive at Notre Dame, in all ways, academically, athletically, and personally, but how do we better understand you? Because we need to build something for what your aspirations are on the field and, and how do we understand you as an athlete? What's your movement? And yes, maybe all the pitchers do one workout, but that's even too broad for where we want to go. We want to say, well, you have left hip mobility issues, but you, you don't. But You're I'm actually just not this wrong up. about yeah. that. <laughs> okay. That's actually not See wrong. See how good I am? That's how informed I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but left hip mobility issues and maybe some flexion issues in your right ankle. Okay, so how do we work with you specifically? Is that right? That is right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you, you specifically to make to help you move more efficiently and effectively, and then ultimately help you maximize that physical potential. And the same thing with you. So, had, so anything that aligns with that. So we have, um, as we've talked early on. So, so another one of Jack's strategic decisions that's masterful. But at the time, I, I was um, frustrated to put it lightly. Um, was we launched the sports science initiative, performance science, all of this, and not one penny more in budget. And it was masterful because Notre Dame, there's a lot of, we want to be partners 
with companies like Under Armour that are cutting edge, young companies that are nimble in the space that, that are trying to understand and answer the same questions and solve the same problems that we are. So, and, and people want to partner with us. So it's been fun in this role because anyone will take my call because I'm calling from the University of Notre Dame because we have Duncan French, because Jack speaks about our commitment in this area of sports science and, and performance sciences nationally, that they understand the platform this gives. So we have the most recently, both of you, sh I, I know that you've done it. Have you done the Dari motion capture yeah, camera? We so did, we did this year. So that is something that we have your report now. We understand how you move. Um, it wasn't a guess that you have left hip mobility issues and right <laughs> ankle flexion. And, and then that goes to your strength and conditioning coach and athletic trainer so they can help you improve those so you can be a better moving athlete, a healthier athlete, and ultimately one that not only performs higher, but reduce, reduces that um, likelihood of, of, of injury. Because if you're moving more efficiently, yeah, that's, and that's, it's a, it's a tall task, right? It's an audacious goal because it's 740 different individualized plans across 26 teams. But it's one that Duncan and I walk in here every day with an excitement, a purpose, and a passion to, to help solve that issue. Yeah, and I know it's made a difference because even in our training room, we see guys working not just on an injury, mm -hmm. but, you know, on mobility and trying to improve those areas. And coaches and our athletic training staff has been working on all that stuff. So it's definitely helped our team. And even week to week, we have different functions and movements that we test just to make sure and see where we're trending throughout the season. So it's definitely been impactful for, for our team. I'll back that too. Our um, all of my teammates are reacting really well to the changes in our um, our workout schedule this Good. fall. And we're seeing quicker recovery. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot more stabilization yeah. for um, basically our entire body. Yeah. But it's, Good. Yeah. W one before we let you go. One one last segment I wanna I, I wanna touch on, and that is that you you've referred a lot to uh, to, to the importance of capturing input from the students, um, and one of the big changes, changes for the better in, in our world, is much more student-athlete voice mm -hmm. in what we do. You see that both in the Student-Athlete Advisory Council, mm -hmm. which falls under your, your ambit, yes. and also the steering committee, which you, you mm -hmm. are part of, which is sort of our board of directors mm -hmm. that has a number of students on it. Talk about student involvement at those levels. You know, it's, uh, again, I think it speaks to your leadership. I, I think um, for everything that's happening nationally, of which Notre Dame is a leader, you know, Jack, Jill Bodenstein, or Trisha Bully, our faculty athletic rep, some ADs would take the approach that, you know, here's what I want to do, and he or she will make those decisions. He, he doesn't make a decision and, 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 and ask me to kind of collect the thoughts, the feedback, the pulse from student athletes. So as we sit there, as they've grown more comfortable um, with, like, really, you want to know what I can say? And I, I can say anything. And, you know, what used to maybe be, like, we'd like another bike rack outside gate two of the Joyce Center becomes, you know what, training table, it's really good, but it can be better in these ways. And, and the lines are a little long. And, and we want, and then when we show that we address those things, it's like, wow, like, they're listening. And so I think, um, I mean, you've seen it uh, in the steering committee. It's, it's, it's big policy college athletics defining issues that is going to set the, the course for the next three, five, seven, ten years. And we have eight to eight, nine student athletes in that group that are absolutely helping author Notre Dame's approach to that. And, and it's been fun because, you know, one of my dreams was always to work at a place where there could be a varsity athlete um, who is student body president. We've had two of the last three, and, it, and, and it's not lost on me how we got close at my previous institution, but, but uh, it, I, I just think that right now, I love the culture of, of how you all know each other, the camaraderie that you've built. And, and I think when you feel that, that value at the place, the broader place, the university, but then within the athletics community, the people you're walking by in the athletic training room, hopefully you guys have done something together. You know each other. You've been to a Rosenthal retreat. You've been to the sack kickball, you know, dress up Halloween thing. And with that, you become more comfortable in voicing your your insights, your opinions, your feedback. And um, that's been so fun to see because as they exercise their voice and own that voice, it's only going to help them professional, you professionally as you move on because you're going to be in a boardroom with, with somebody like Jack one day. And yeah, he, I hope not. But <laughs> and he's paying you to come in there and have a perspective, you know, like bring a perspective. And, and hopefully you will have exercised that at one point and built that muscle. Mike, thanks so much uh, for joining us. I, I think the uh, part of the the tribute to the good work you're doing is the quality of my three co-hosts now over two years. Uh, these two talented co-hosts and Mr. Schmidt before them. So uh, thanks for thanks for all of you, all that you do to make Notre Dame athletics and its students better. Oh, thanks, Jack. We'll be back in a minute. 
we represent the greatest university in the world. Let's carry that pride tonight onto this field, and let's play for Notre Dame, and let's play for Our Lady. That's how we're playing today. I don't know what next week holds, or the week after, or three weeks down the road, but tonight, that's how we're playing this football game. It's caught beautifully. What a play. Touchdown.